Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High. Today what I want to do is I want to model a very famous experiment done by Ernest Rutherford in the early part of the 20th century. And secondly, I also want to model a bit of how the process of science actually works. Now let me explain. And the way I'm going to do this is I've got this disk here that I 3D printed and I also have these ramps and inside the ramp I'm not sure if you can see but I also have some metal ball bearings and I can successfully allow those metal ball bearings go down the ramp and across the plane here. Now what I will do though is I will place a disc here. Now this disc underneath it has a particular shape and that shape is in this case unknown to you and I want you to have a look to see how the marbles interact with this unknown shape and see how they scatter off. And I'm going to uh, do this from a couple of different angles so that maybe you can infer what is going on. So here is our first demonstration. Now, did you get that? Did you see how they deflected around the particular object? Now, if I did that on the other side, so did you predict that it was a triangular shape? I'm hoping that you did. But even if you didn't, you could probably see that you could probably infer that it was a triangle by the way it interacted with the particular shape underneath here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change another shape and so let's see if you can work out what's going on here. So now we have another shape there. Let's see what happens now. And now from a different angle, Have you worked out what shape the particles are interacting with? Now in my third setup, I'm actually modeling what Rutherford actually got as his results. Now remember, at the time the model of the atom was a plum pudding model. That is, there was some sort of sphere which was had a positive charge and there were electrons embedded in it. And we call this the JJ Thompson plum pudding model. But what Rutherford expected was that all the particles, when we would fire alpha particles through a gold foil, that all the particles would basically go through fairly evenly. And very rarely would you may get a deflection along the way, and it would be sort of a random deflection because of these uh, electrons embedded in this plum pudding model was randomly distributed. But this is what he got. Did you see that? We had some passing through, some deflecting, and then we had one, in this case, bouncing straight back. Now that was modeled by this particular shape. And this is often referred to as a potential well. So what we have here is a disc that represents that uh, as it goes straight through there, it deflects off. But as it goes up, the ramp on this side, it bounces straight back. And this represents the actual force of repulsion that the alpha particles experienced as they approach the nucleus of the gold atom. So in essence, this models Rutherford's experiment pretty well in that it allows us to see that most of the mass was concentrated in the center of the atom. The fact that most of the particles passed through and only a very few basically bounced straight back in the words of Rutherford, it was like firing a cannibal at t tissue paper and having it bounce back. So his model actually changed the current accepted model of the atom. What was there previously was the plum pudding model, a sphere basically of positive charge with electrons embedded in it. JJ Thompson developed that model and was often referred to as the plum pudding model. But Rutherford experiment changed that. 
Instead of this plum pudding model, we now have a model which was often referred to as the planetary model, where the most of the mass resided in the center, in the nucleus, and the electrons are on the outside. Now I have a video on that, and I encourage you to have a look at that, which goes into the physics much greater detail. But I do want to talk about one other aspect, and that is the process of science. So you actually followed the process of science. What did you do? Well, you made observations, and as a result, you started to formulate a model in your head. And then what you did was, hopefully, is that as I changed the position, you had this model in your head, and now you wanted to see whether the evidence, that is, the other experiments, actually confirmed or did not confirm the model that you had. And you may have actually had your model validated, or you may have had your model not validated, and you had to change your model. And that's how science actually works. Science is all about making observations, and we develop models. Models that allows us to explain those observations, or, and therefore, from that model, we then make predictions. And if we make predictions, then what we can do is do more experimentation to see whether those predictions hold true. Now, those models will therefore, by their very nature, either be supported or not supported. The models may be thrown out or may be modified, but models will always be changing as we ex take more information and make further predictions. Now, those models can be physical models, as like this, but it can also be mere mathematical models as well. So that's how science works. Making models based on observations, those models allow us therefore to predict things, and then we make further experiments to validate by actually seeing if those predictions hold true. There you have it. There is a very simple demonstration here of the Rutherford experiment, but at the same time, taking you through the whole process of science. By the way, this particular construction here is basically something that I picked up from CERN, and I'm going to put a link in the description below so that you can download this yourself and print it off yourself, whether you are a teacher or a very uh, passionate physics student, and uh, set this up fairly cheap, and all you have to have is extra is the little ball bearings as well. My name is Paul from Physics High. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell to get the latest updates, and leave a comment below if it's been helpful for you. And I hope you may consider to support me via Patreon. Take care. Bye for now.